But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. The best is yet to come. On the smallest scale, electrostatics is significantly stronger than gravity is even claimed to be. Magnitude greater, 10 to the 36 power to be specific. Houston, we have a call. We uh, destroyed that technology. People should not be walking around with masks. That stuff is flat. There's your flu. Last year. Here's your flu this year. Literally doesn't even exist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hibbler Effect. Today we have, and yes, I will call him a scientist. Look up the fucking definition. The scientist, the truther, the researcher, one of the stars of Level With Me, Austin Witsit from Witsit Gets It. Thank you for coming on, brother. Yeah, of course. Glad to be here, man. Overdue. Yeah, overdue. We, we've tried to do this show a few times now, and it's just, you know, we're very busy men. So, but we linked up now. I'm glad we did. Um, I wanted to talk to you, as as you know, and my audience knows, first 20, 25 minutes will be on YouTube. So, you know, no crazy topics uh, in the intro here, but I do want to talk about, you know, obviously the film, and you were a big part, a big role in that film. I'm getting a lot of feedback on electrostatics right now. I'm getting blown up because of you. And I'm like, bro, just hit up Austin. Like, I know a little bit, you know. Um, but how has your feedback been? You, did anyone hit you up about the film and electrostatics or explain something? Or did you hear any feedback on that? Yeah, yeah. I've like heard uh, nothing but good feedback about the movie. I oh, think great. it's uh, great. It's definitely about to like change, shake things up, let's say. Um, and yeah, I had a lot of people say that they were super uh, excited that we tackled the gravity thing. They think it's like overdue and people don't really discuss this. So uh, yeah, and it gets very fascinating when you start looking into the technology of how they fly some of this stuff around. So yeah, I've got good feedback. I think it'll help uh, piece things together for people. Yeah, well, you know, in level, I tried to touch on gr just gravity as a whole in, in terms of density and buoyancy and at least trying to break it down in a simplistic format. I think Eric did a good job uh, of that in level. But <clears throat> I knew this time around, because I've been watching you for a while now with with the electrostatics and the force of it and the the proof of it and the no need for some made up gravity theory with with dark matter that doesn't exist so it's like they 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 created this illusion to i'm assuming simply back up the ball i mean it, was there really any thought behind gravity to you besides that was there any other reason that the masses forced it down our, our our throats as children and continue to to force it down children's throats is it simply just to back up heliocentrism or is it is there anything else to it yeah so that's how it started literally uh you have you have newton 1666 and so he uh the story well, that's, that's the reported story but yeah i course. wasn't there i don't know if he existed but still continue <laughs> yeah we'll just take this story and uh yeah. he he's had to explain how the bodies could move around each other which to be fair, there is stuff moving in the sky. And so there must be something causing it, but he had to explain it from within their paradigm. And then of course he said, I, I can't explain it. It must be an act of God. I have no idea what it is, but here's the math basically. Um, and yeah, they can't use electrostatics because it would be way too weak. They have uh, immense distances and huge masses, so they had to make up a new idea. And then they can't even use electromagnetism or electricity because they claim it's in a giant vacuum. So you wouldn't be able to have that work either. So they just had to make up a new force. And then, of course, you have to bend the oceans around the sphere and have it stick, tilted, wobbling, spinning. So... Uh, pretty much the the evidence for gravity is that the earth can't be a spinning sphere without it, but literally. Yeah. I mean, they go hand in hand. They, they, they have to go together. And that's usually globe heads answers to most questions. They refuse to look up or answer truthfully is just their lazy answer. Was, well, yeah, it's, it's the magical gravity doing these things that we can't explain, doing these things we can't replicate, doing these things that, are magical their quick answer is gravity um in terms of density and buoyancy 
how does that fit in with electrostatics? That obviously has to go hand in hand, but try to break that down um, for my people. Cause I, again, all I got, a lot of my people hit me up about it and I'm like, you know, I, I know some, I'm, I'm still learning. I, I still go back to your raw footage of the film. Cause obviously we couldn't keep everything in. That, that would have been a four hour film. Uh, it took two years probably, but I go back and I listen to your rants and your, and the things you say, and there's even a few parts when you're ranting about electrostatics where you're like, all right, yeah, don't include that. That's more of my opinion. That's more of my opinion. Don't include that. Let me, let me start that over. And it's like, ah, wow. Like I respect that. You know, like you're, you, you, you might have strong opinions on it, but sorry, initially questioned the, the density and buoyancy package along with electrostatics explain to my audience kind of how all that fits together and, and how all that can make sense for them because they're flat earthers watching obviously so sure yeah yeah so the way i understand it with the evidence that we have is there is something that sets up and down and that is electrostatics that sets the up and down um and then basically density takes over from there uh, so of course the object's density relative to the medium's density causes it to go up or down because of what they call the buoyant force. And then people will say, oh, well, that's got gravity in it. Well, actually it's got little G in it, which is, uh, just downward acceleration. So one important thing to wrap your mind around is there's a difference in gravity and gravitation. Gravitation is the idea that these objects are moving around each other because gravity is pulling them in. It's called gravitation. Gravity means weight uh, or how heavy something is, gravitas. Well, objects do in fact have gravitas, right? I mean, we know that. You're, you weigh something, I weigh something. And exactly how it pertains to density um, and why I say density cannot be the full answer by itself is because, well, what causes density? So density is the compactness of matter, how much matter you have in a certain volume, how compact it is, or more crudely, how tightly it's held together. Well, to know what causes that, you would have to know what's holding the matter together to then give it a certain compactness. And the answer is electrostatics. So you actually can't have density without electrostatics. Okay. And then that's what sets the up and down. Everything wants to go to the earth to equalize. And obviously buoyancy plays a role in the same sense. Um, when it comes to, <clears throat> I always try to explain density and buoyancy. I get it, I'm, electrostatics is new to me, but it completely, it has to go to, now, now I get it. I always felt like there was a missing factor in density and buoyancy it made sense it did explain most things but now it's kind of like the perfect package and it's the strongest package in terms of evidence in terms of replicating it um as those of you that watch level with me um and i still want to thank the ones coming in before it's free to donate to get the high def version thank you all but you know with uh, not too many film spoilers here but uh, you know when you're when we when we linked up out by you I didn't know what to expect. I knew the machine itself, um, what it was capable of doing, um, but you really kind of broke it down in a sense for me when I was there that it's so controllable. You can control, maneuver things with this. I mean, he, this guy, you know, th he's got this little machine. I, I don't know how much it costs. I'm sure there's ones way better, way bigger, way stronger, obviously. But he's got a machine to prove to me something scientifically. Now, you know, in terms of like, hey, you know, actually, I'll say it publicly. Can you uh, prove gravity with machines and here on Earth and scientific method? And can, if you do that, hit me up. I'll come by. I'll film it. So I'll be waiting probably the rest of my life. Right, Austin? But the, the point is, is that, you know, to, to watch someone prove something to you, explain it to you and then show you. Uh, it's mind boggling. And at that point I was hooked on electrostatics, trying to learn more about it. It's very, I feel like I'm in college when I learn about it, like in the, mentally where it's like, there's so much information there and it's all provable. How would you kind of, <laughs> not like you didn't try to do that in the film already, but simplistically what's electrostatics? What, what is it? Well, uh, most people know density and buoyancy. Most people know what that is. You take a uh, a ping pong and a golf ball in the ocean and you drop both. And you know what I mean? It's like people understand the concept of it all. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
Now, but electrostatics, this is what's replacing gravity in reality, because here's a force that's provable. You can use a scientific method. You can replicate it here on Earth. And in, and but why does it oversee gravity? Explain to my audience and, and the public why gravity has gone because of this. Yeah. yeah, so electrostatic, of course, being the charge between what people call molecules and particles but it doesn't matter the matter is held together by a charge i would say it's vibration that causes the charge and um, that's pretty obvious to me but either way um so the smallest amount of electrostatics like the smallest scale you can get to is 10 to the 36th or 39th varies uh power stronger than gravity is even claimed to be and that is 36 zeros so it's not even close it's i don't even think like you could laughable. say a number that defines that right it's you, there there isn't a number that no would, yeah yeah okay it's that strong no, you need guys, the, but go ahead yeah you need the uh exponential fact so it's it's just crazy to me that people don't see that part um but yeah, so gravity's nowhere to be found. In fact, if you thought that gravity existed, how could you even find it? Because there's a force there that does the same thing gravity's supposed to do, and it's way stronger, and you can't get rid of it, which means you could never find such a thing. Of course, it doesn't exist because as we get to bigger scales, electricity is controlling everything. It just wouldn't work for their solar system. So basically all evidence shows us that electrostatics is like the is basically the commonality between everything that exists everything that exists has that and you can manipulate it and you can actually disintegrate matter you can make it float you can change its weight you can change how fast it goes up and down and so where does gravity come into the picture and it just goes back to the first the first question right which is that they just need it for their conceptual model which means it must be there even though we can't find it so yeah the the strength comparison should be pretty eye-opening to people has there has there been even fake attempts to show evidence of gravity i mean has there has there been well it's kind of like asking the question have they ever even faked showing the earth from space uh, of course but have they have they ever you know, said, hey, we do have a proof of gravity. You know, we, we have replicated it here on Earth, even though it's fibbed. But has that ever even happened, Austin? There's really only one that people will bring up, and it's Cavendish. Okay. Which is really funny, but simply put, you have two balls hanging on, uh, like, little tent tension wires, and they move towards each other. And... uh they do occasionally move towards each other. It's because the balls are electrostatic and the air it's in is electrostatic. And so there's transference. Uh, like you can actually charge yourself with electrostatics and you can point at a candle across the room and make it go out. And you could move your finger down a whole line of candles and they'll all go out as you point at them. Well, where is that charge going through to get to the candle? Well, it's, it's the air and, and you can even do it transference in a vacuum so it's everywhere there's something that carries it so anyway it interacts with the balls um so they hijacked electrostatics again and you can't even change it or manipulate or more so remove it and what's so funny about that is the amount of gravity they say they're finding is so incredibly small dude like it's hilarious it's basically non-existent it's like uh with a few kilogram balls, it's like the equivalent of a couple of cells, like human cells of like magnitude. So if it moves any at all, they're just like gravity and, and they <laughs> ignore all the other times. So what's what's very eye opening is that's like the only one. Nothing else exists. That's all you'll ever hear. And yeah, it's well, they made one attempt. They made yeah, they made one attempt and they sold it to the masses and they wrote it in the books as fact and truth and this is this and that's all they need. They know they can't keep replicating bullshit. So they had one story. They wanted to see if it stuck. If people bought it, and it seems like we did as a, as humanity at the moment. Uh, obviously, times are changing. Look around you, but. It's one of those things where it's kind of like NASA. They're like, oh, we only took one picture of Earth, you know, just just one. 
just one's real. You know, it's like, we know that yeah. one is not real, but it's the point of how lazy they are. And the fact that, you know, they just look at the public interest at that point. It's like, Hey, did we sell the moon landing? All right. We got to do about five more, I guess. I mean, it's not really working here. So they, but if, if something works, leave it alone, leave it alone. No one's going to question it. No one's going to, you know, you can't be, you can't question gravity when you're taught it at five, six years old, you don't question anything at five, six years old. Okay. You're not, I mean, you still defending Santa and the tooth fairy guys. So, um, you know, you're going to be told what's what, and you're going to be told in an authoritative way. And it's backed up by your parents at home. That uh, that's not going away. That has to be broken down as you get older and realize the you know, realize, 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 right? So it's like, once you get older, it's like, you can start to break that down. I don't under, why do you think Austin that people, let's just say in our age group from your age to mine, why, why is it difficult for people to get this man? Why is it, why is it so hard? Not even just true earth and, 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 and the lies of NASA and the deceptions, but even something so obviously blatantly provable, like electrostatics is the force with your stupid fucking microphone you drop on the ground. They have to default to gravity, obviously programming and education. But with this type of evidence, this groundbreaking evidence that you've known about for a long time, I'm assuming, what, what can we do to break this to the masses in a bigger way? Because it, it shouldn't be this hard. Uh, this is proof versus theory. What can we do? I mean, what what can we do? What can we really do? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> You're uh, like, if I had the answer, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something almost metaphysical to it, where some people are incapable of seeing truth uh, in their current state. I think like fear is one of the most uh, impactful emotions, and people have fear of not being accepted, fear of looking stupid. Uh, intelligent people don't fear looking stupid, ironically. So that's what it is. They're they're fearful of not fitting in. I think it's that simple. So it's easier to not look at. Like if uh, I'm like, yo, your girlfriend's cheating on you, bro. I just saw her at the club with a couple of people. Nah, she would never do that. Well, this video on my iPhone says differently. And they just wouldn't even look at the video because yeah. they want, you know, they proposed to her or whatever. So I think that's the main thing. Because if someone's honest and they listen to what you just said, which is that one of these things is being scientifically tested, you're manipulating the variable and showing it causes the effects. So you can control all the other variables and you can show the weight changes. It goes up, it'll levitate, it goes up and down. With enough, you could levitate anything. It would just, to do it to you, I'd have to kill you a thousand times over, you know? Um, but we can't do anything like that with gravity. You can't do anything. You're not bending and warping space time in an experiment. So one is scientifically valid. One is not. So it just goes back to the first thing. It's like, well, I have to believe in this because I have to believe in the globe because everyone else believes in the globe. And I can't even fathom looking into the face of not being accepted. So it's it, that's what it really is. It's just fear and fear renders your position ignorant. Yeah, fear of ridicule too. I mean, obviously no one wants their family and friends to poke fun at them or challenge them. But if you're a man of truth, and I mean man by man or woman, uh, if you're a man of truth, you don't care about what people think. You don't care about, it's like, uh, it, it, I always go back to Santa because it's like the, the six-year-old that was told Santa's bullshit tells the other six-year-old at school that day that Santa's bullshit, and they might have the same type of argument. The problem is the kid telling the other kid that Santa's bullshit is the true earther in this story. And the other kid, you know, the other kid's going to be like, no, he's not. What are you talking about? I, dude, he ate my the cookies and shit. Like, they're going to have the argument, and um, the kid can break it down any way. That kid's not, until the authority figure tells them, that Santa's yep. bullshit until mom and dad, when, you know, maybe they wait a few more months because of the pressure, then they finally break and tell their child, you know what? Yeah. Your little Tommy, your friend was right. You know how hard that is for that kid. Not only did, did he just realize his folks, his parents have been lying to him. His teachers have been lying to him. Everyone's been lying to him. His uncles, his aunts, his grandparents, everyone's a liar, but now he has to face his buddy at school to say you're right 
that is hard especially for adults dude that is so hard to break their ego and pride and put it down and say you know what you're right but it's happening though i get a lot of dms and emails of people saying that one of my films one of the levels is specifically the new one changed their outlook on everything and that's exactly what it was made to do um you know i'm not here to brainwash anyone with anything other than truth take that how you want We've been brainwashed our entire lives, guys, with lies. Everything is reverse. Everything is the opposite. Everything of truth is uh, opposite of truth is taught to us in the masses for a reason. So when it comes time to this awakening, um, you know, I think it's coming from above and, and the creator is is there's something going on. We all feel it. There's something going on, especially uh, in the truth realm. We know that we feel truth more than ever. It resonates more than ever now. But this is something that can break the matrix electrostatics we need to you know keep going and, and i just watched your debate with uh one of the professors um uh, i forgot the guy's name i'm sure you know the name uh you, robert parks yeah so and he's a very respect uh res respectful man so i give him that very mm -hmm. um brainwashed and and when you're that age up up in that that age range not that he's old or nothing but you got more brainwashing. You had your brainwash, and especially at his level of education, brainwashing. But man, you did a really good job. I advise everyone to go to Witsit Gets It. Was that a Rockfin? YouTube also. Oh, Rockfin and YouTube. Go go check out Witsit Gets It's channel and watch that debate. It's it's very good. And it's not even like, damn, Austin, you killed him. No, of course you won. <laughs> Facts and truth always win. But you had this guy kind of head spinning, man. There's many moments where he was kind of speechless, in my opinion. So you did a really good job. I want to commend you on that. But that's what we need is my point. We need more of that. I'm not just putting pressure on you, dog. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to like, do that shit every day. Be the new Dave Weiss with it. Like, just 10, <laughs> 10 times a day. Like, nah. Yeah. Like, you, you don't got time for that. But at the same time, I need copycats, guys. We need you. I need people to replicate what Austin's doing. Go watch him. Go learn. Go verify, of course. Don't believe anybody. Go verify this stuff and let's keep teaching it. Yeah, well, just one is to, to inform yourself about the basics. Like, what is electrostatics? Um, what, like, that it's in all matter. Kind of, like, go verify that for yourself. Go look into how it's on the earth and there's a current going down to the earth. Like, some of the basics, just make sure you understand that. Under, understand you're going to hear some pretty remedial questions, but just know how to answer them. Uh, like, why do things not float when you change the charge? You're like, well, it's still got density. And so it's still, you know, you just learn the basics. And unfortunately, the only answer as to how you're going to get good at debating is you have to just debate and you have to learn fallacies. So well, I don't I even say, mean debating, Austin. I just mean educating, uh, teaching, right. making reels, making videos, uh, trying to get electrostatics out there make it more popular you know how quickly flat earth became popular in 2015 it was bleh, just the term well can we get that going with electrostatics that's the thing like what can all of us do as a community mm. besides sharing clips and stuff like how can we trump this i mean can we keep calling the professors out can we keep you know challenging emailing these these universities about their their teachings and and how this is the truth i mean what what are some realistic things that that we can do as a community besides just talk about it. You know, like there's gotta yeah. be a way to force this down the throats of mainstream and the public because it's the truth. And I, you know, I'm addicted to that. So I want the truth out there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you said it con contacting professors and uh, different physicists, and then maybe us coordinating, you know, more elaborate tests to present to those people. And then, yeah, just integrating it into our argument, whether it be memes or videos on Insta or TikTok, whatever people use, because TikTok's got like 3 billion flat earth searches, right? So I think just integrate normalizing the electrostatics, not just saying density, like explain the density, but say, and it's, that's all electrostatic. Um, everything's electric. Everything's connected. You could even use the word electromagnetic. <clears throat> People are more familiar with that. It's bastardized, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I would say just normalizing the, the conversation in place of just saying density would be the big step. Like it can still be 
bundled up with flat earth in that sense. Uh, yeah, maybe reach out to physicists and professors and ask them like, 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 can you refute this? Like, like, uh, what's going on here? Clearly gravity seems to be electromagnetic. Maybe that's the best. I, I, I mean, no, that's or great, tests no. that would gain traction. Maybe that's great advice. Uh, guys, we'll leave YouTube on that note. I want to thank Austin for joining us today. Everybody go check him out. Um, and check us out on Rockfin. We're going to get dirty. All right, guys. See you next time. Peace.